In Onatrix for Maya, we have various ways of editing clumps and creating sub-clumping. In this scene, we already set up a base clump layer, and then on top of it, we added sub-clumps. If you need to know how to add sub-clumps, we have a separate video on that. We also have the edit guides operators on top of the big original clumps, as well as the smaller sub clumps here. And if I go to my brush tool and I start modifying the hairs, you can see that it works fine, but there is one little problem. It destroys the shapes of the clumps. I can do the same thing in the bottom clump layer. So if I edit the guides here, but again, the clump shapes are destroyed here while the relative sub clumps remain intact. Ornatrix provides a way of modifying whole clumps at the same time without destroying the relative shape with edit guides. And the same approach can be applied to any hair that is grouped together. But in this case, it is very useful to look at the situation with the clumps. So first thing I will do is I will go to my bottom layer clumps and I will look for this option called set clump strand groups. If I check this option, each clump that is generated will set the hairs that belong to it to its own strand group. This is evident if I go to the furl ball shape and I enable the strand group display setting. If I just deselect, you can see that each clump now has its own strand group displayed separately. I will also go to my second clump operator and I will set the same option here as well. And as you can see now, each sub clump also has a strand group assigned to it. Before this clump operator, at this point in our operator stack, the strand groups are created per each bigger clump. And after this clump operator, they are assigned to each of the smaller sub clumps. If I go to the edit guides operator and I select my brush tool and go to the tool settings dialog, if I scroll a little bit down, we have these parameters here called modify by group. And in here, by default, the algorithm is none, but I can change it to linear space. If I select this option and I start modifying my hair, it will no longer modify individual hairs, but instead it will modify whole groups of hairs. And this is useful in our case because we have grouped our hairs by their clump. So now when I start brushing the hairs, it will change the whole clumps at the same time without destroying their relative shape. If I go to the edit guides operator above my second sub clumping operator, I can also do the same. And in this case, it will preserve the shape of the sub clumps within each of the bigger clumps. So if I just zoom in, you can see that I can modify individual sub clumps, but the hairs within those sub clumps will not be separated and will stay together as a clump. So this is just a quick trick that you can use to keep your hairs clumped together while at the same time being able to modify their shape using edit guides.